Hi, I'm Anuradha Sen Gupta, and on the Media Dialogues today, the spotlight is on television. According to the EY report on the media and entertainment sector, the TV business shrunk by 13% in the past year, and the big deal, at least in the popular imagination, if not on the PNL, is streaming. So all legacy TV companies have pivoted to add streaming services and are working overtime to play by the new rules of the game. To understand what these rules are and how companies are navigating the current economic environment, I'm talking today to Megha Tata. She's the Managing Director, South Asia for Discovery Communications. Harit Nagpal, Managing Director and CEO of Tata Sky. And Puneet Mishra, President, Content and International Markets at Z. It's lovely to see all of you. Thank you for joining me. Megha, I'm going to start with you. Uh, tell me, you know, I think the first wave of COVID, when it hit us, it hit us and it was a shock. The second wave, I think, came with some shock and a lot of sorrow. As the, the second wave seems to recede, what does it leave exposed of the broadcast industry that you've you know, been, belonged to for so many years, both in terms of the strengths as well as the weaknesses that this extraordinary experience leaves exposed? Thanks, Anuradha, and lovely to be uh, on this platform uh, <clears throat> with friends and colleagues of the industry for the last 30 odd years now. Uh, and as you rightly said that, um, you know, these, these last few years have taught us some unprecedented uh, aspects, which I think none of us were really, really prepared for. Uh, but I think one of the fundamental things um, which has happened is that uh, what was expected to happen at an industry level probably in the next five to seven years has sort of got shrunk in in the last two years. And that's what has been a fundamental shift within the, in the entire ecosystem which has taken place. Uh, whilst um, uh, television has been ruling the game uh, for so many years, but uh, what these last two years have taught that, uh, you know, the customer is still continues to be the center of everyone's focus. And if the customer is wanting to consume content in different platforms, then the businesses have to evolve to cater to that as well. And that's really what has come about with most of the broadcasters uh, uh, having pivoted into the OTT game as well. Um, and not just that, I think, uh, 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 you know, fundamentally in India specifically, uh, it's always been said that when a new medium comes, the, they announce the demise of the previous one. And uh, none of that has happened. All have survived, um, you know, and it doesn't have to be an either or world, frankly. It can be an and world and it is an and right. world. You can have television uh, growing, which is a fact, and that's, uh, you know, ironic. Hmm. Um, at the same time, OTT and the digital consumption has been on the right. rise again. Okay, Megha, so let me get Harith in here. Uh, let me get a Harith in here because, Harith, you at Tata Sky, uh, you know, by the nature of what Tata Sky offers in the distribution space, you have a really bird's eye view of the entire business. How would you say the past year and a half has been for the business in terms of what it has exposed, given what Mega has just brought to the table? Yeah, were, we were worried when it started uh, because of our inability to get into people's homes to install or to repair. But television is such a center stage kind of a product in most homes. I mean, the, the dependence on the device for information, entertainment, education, you name it, uh, is so high that uh, if somebody wants it, he's willing to risk somebody coming into his house and install it. If it is not working, he's willing to risk somebody coming into the house to repair it. Uh, so we haven't seen too much of a hindrance. Okay, everybody observed caution while going in and installing or repairing in terms of masks and sanitizers and distance and everything like that. But uh, we haven't uh, seen COVID become a hindrance to installing or repairing the uh, connections that we have. Right. Uh, Harit, I have a follow-up question. You know, uh, this EY report that I mentioned talks about how subscription revenues have fallen considerably and also about how almost 2 million and some figures are much higher than that of pay TV. Um, uh, you know, pay TV uh, subscriptions have fallen by that many number of homes. Is that how, how do you see it? Can you uh, validate this information? And why do you think that's happening? And where is that number going? Anand. 
130 million PTV base, 2 million fluctuates month on month, depending on whether there is a cricket match or not, whether there is a popular uh, action and that live, live, live action happening on content or not. So a 2 million up or down is a monthly feature. Uh, I won't pay too much attention on that. It depends on when you survey it. Uh, we haven't seen these kinds of ups and downs. Yes, there have been ups and downs. When the when COVID, uh, when the lockdown was declared the first time in March uh, last year, there was a sudden surge for people who were deactive for a long time, reactivated. Then afterwards, when fresh content stopped coming in, live sports did not happen for almost about six to eight months. There was a decline. When live sports came back, things started going up. Every time live sports go down, some people deactivate. Live sports come back, people reactivate. Puneet Megha just talked about how it's not going to be either or, it is going to be and. Uh, and, you know, at Z, you're now heading the content uh, piece for both streaming and television. Tell us how that's working and what is the rationale behind that? Because as a consumer, my sense is that when I tune into ZTV, I see something very different from when I tune into Z5. And I'm not talking about, obviously, catch-up TV here. Yeah. So first, just to uh, support what Mega said, uh, you talked about a 13% decline. Uh, you're probably referring to the revenues in the market. Actually, the number of homes that were watching TV and indeed number of individuals who've been watching TV has gone up by almost 7%, both mm -hmm. those numbers. Mm -hmm. uh, the monetization, given that the advertisers uh, were perhaps more focused on the supply side than the demand side, is where the revenue piece on television certainly was impacted. Uh, equally, perhaps the situation accelerated the adoption of OTT. And that is where we are very strong believers of not thinking, as Mega said, the or option, but the and option. And that's something that we continue to do. Uh, now coming to the question that uh, you're referring to, see, the, the world of content has had two dominant uh, obsessions. It's either content or platform. And perhaps the one lesson that the market should be learning now is that that little inconvenience called the viewer is really the right person who we should have been thinking about. And that is why we have structured ourselves at Z in the way we have, where we've said that the preeminence is of the viewer and the human being, really. You have to understand that human being at the core. So if I'm uh, talking to somebody in Tamil Nadu and if that is the consumer that we want to create content for, First, we have to understand that viewer in Tamil Nadu. We have to understand that human being, the person, the fears, the hopes, the aspirations. Then you add a layer of which is the platform or the occasion that they are consuming. So if I'm consuming content as a Tamilian on TV, I may be having a different behavior. But I may be the same person then watching content on my mobile phone, either when I'm traveling or late at night. So what we are saying is that we would like to build the capability of our great creative leaders around focusing on and learning from viewers in each of these markets a lot more. Right. And then using right. that to feed in into the great creativity they do. And then we just have to add this layer of learning how each platform, in that sense, is meeting a different need. Right. But the creation right. process uh, can be driven in some ways through a meta theme, which is common, actually. Right. But, but it's interesting because Mega, Puneet seems to suggest that television did not really regard put, uh, regard the viewer as central to programming decisions. Is that the way to interpret what Puneet has just said? And if that is the case, then it's a very sorry comment on legacy television, isn't it? Well, no, no, I don't think so. Puneet uh, alluded to that. I think customer has always been the core of any content offering. It's just the mediums have changed. I think what, the center core doesn't change and that remains cu customer no, so, focused. So, Mega, how, how has uh, the launch of Discovery Plus, which you did last year, how has that made you look or relook re -look at the customer, um, you know, versus when you just had the linear TV part of the business? Because I think Puneet is saying something interesting there. No, you're absolutely right. I think the, you know, the, there were a certain set of limitations, let me put it this way, when it came to the linear world where discovery was concerned. There was a certain set of genres we were uh, offering and that was really working well because that was a deep integration on what we were providing from, uh, from an audience uh, need point of view. 
But what Discovery Plus did, the plus part, which added that the, the, the universe became much larger. There was an opportunity to bring far more content on a platform which was beyond what was being served on linear. So I think that is the combination which really worked in our favor. And that's what Discovery Plus is offering is that like in, an, an entire, in a world which is fighting the fiction war, we created an opportunity for a content which was not being served enough, we believe, in for the Indian audiences. And that's why the success of Discovery Plus. Just to perhaps elucidate the point I was making, you see, our platforms in that sense had already become a surrogate of who's the viewer. When you thought TV, you knew the visual of who's the viewer on the other side. It's very homogeneous. Including on the movies, for example, you know that, okay, this is a single screen theater kind of a movie because you have a surrogate view of the viewer already in your mind. That's now very different with the OTT world. And that is where, for the creative people who now have to figure out how to serve content across very different viewer preferences, the same viewers, different references, and very different paths to purchase or consume, so to speak. And that is where I was going, that we have to build a lot more uh, of understanding in our creative people on how then they create so that we we keep getting great content and great PNLs, by the way. Okay. Harit, weigh in on this conversation that we've just had. So I, I, I'll have to wear my viewer hat and not my distributor hat here. And uh, let me say that uh, the broadcasters on my two sides have failed me as a viewer because... Uh, you know, just now it was said that when I think television, I think of a type of a customer. When I think OTT, I think of another type of a customer. Sorry, I have both. I have access to, on, on one side, we're saying it's an and world and not an or world. I have access to both television and OTT. I have not given up my television because I have access to OTT. Yet, I am the same human being. And if I like something on OTT and I'm watching on OTT, it's because it is catering to my social standing and my way of thinking and the person that I am, uh, which has obviously evolved over a period. Mm. Now, when I go to the watching television, uh, I see that they're catering to me, which was 20 years ago. Now, there are, I'm sure there are 5, 10, 20, 30 million homes like mine uh, who have evolved, moved away from Roti Kapda Makan, Saas Bahu Nagin and all these kinds of things and have moved on to something new, which... OTT definitely caters to me when I walk walk in there, but television does not. I can't pinpoint one entertainment program on television today, which I would like to watch at 8 p.m. To, tonight before dinner. So, and, and you would put this blame on? I think I can I can sense where this argument is going, Harit, because I do know you rather well. <laughs> you do. So, 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 yeah. I mean, you. The broadcasters have certainly not invested in catering, keep, keeping the television screens, the live TV screens of homes like mine on in the evenings. Are you saying it is because they, you know, everybody still knows that there are, you know, 90 million and 100 million unserved homes yet. And so there's a lot of headroom to grow for linear and broadcast TV in the country. Uh, because I know that you do make a case for, um, you know, unshackling the TV uh, industry, which, uh, you know, the NTOs, re successive regimes via the TRAI seems to have done. And I know the matter is in the courts as we speak. Almost about two and a half years, the broadcasters have not had the opportunity to take their prices up. Now, how can any industry survive without uh, taking a price hike for two and a half years when your costs are going up? I and mean, inflation hits everybody equally. You have to pay more wages. Your petrol is getting more expensive. Your rentals are going up. Everything is going up. In that environment, to be able to, to keep your prices constant for two and a half years, name me one category which has done that in the last two and a half years. Uh, is obviously it's and then in between they almost had about six to eight months of zero or minimal advertising yeah, revenue yeah it's so add the two up no price hike for two and a half years eight months of no advertising how do i expect the broadcast to, to invest in new categories for a, a, a niche segment uh, like me puneet you just did the launch of radhe isn't it the big salman khan starter um how did that work across the different platforms that it was released on via Z? I know it also released in theatres, wherever theatres were open. How much does, does new content and content play in driving subscriber numbers where uh, OTT and streaming services are concerned? 
So starting from uh, the last part, it's absolutely driven by the two pillars of content on greats, uh, you know, on one side, and that is the primary driver. And table stakes is, of course, technology and the user experience. So the dominant driver for subscription remains to be great content. And Radhe actually did fabulously well uh, with uh, the launch that we did. It's still to go on TV, so it's it's been on OTT for us first. Uh, and to the point that Mega made, it's important because we began by saying that you know the television or the broadcasters are pivoting. I think we are essentially saying that we are serving the viewers wherever we find them. And there are different kind of viewer needs and viewer uh, profiles. So on television, which is in 200 million homes and growing now to 210 or whatever, uh, we are catering and 95% homes are single TV homes. We are catering to a certain kind of a viewer and a viewer experience and a, and a measurement system, by the way, which uh, then tells us how popular or not we are. And on the OTT side, we are, we are targeting a segment of one pretty much. Everyone is uh, a target audience as an individual. We then have that space and luxury to create the very different kinds of content. And uh, that is something that I think we'll have to live with. There is no alternative for us but to realize that these both worlds allow us now. And I would say it's more freedom that we have than a constraint. Mm. Uh, Harit, is this uh, is I know that you talk about how uh, how relatively speaking the streaming numbers are small, and you also have made the case previously that the consumption of streaming services is a free or cheap data led rather than you know people actually consciously paying for what they are seeing. Um, but really, the adoption and the buzz that has happened in the past year, do you see? television as really now being eventually becoming the sort of add-on because with smart TVs, I'm going to watch streaming content on my television. I'm not going to just watch it on the mobile or on my laptop or, you know, um, uh, iPad or whatever. So I beg to differ there because when a cricket match starts at 4 a.m. in Australia, you set an alarm and you sit in front of the television. When the Prime Minister speaks at 5 p.m., you make sure you switch on. When there's breaking news, you switch on the television and watch it on that. Television is not dead even in homes which have got access to OTT. And their numbers are not small. Those homes are 3 million, 4 million, maybe 5 million homes. We have channels in this country which cater to less than 1 million subscribers, potential subscribers, and get advertising also. These 5 million homes are high-value homes, high-spending homes, uh, can get advertisers to uh, you know, cater to these homes and uh, be at the, these homes. If content of the sort that is made available on OTT, if that is made available on television at specific mm -hmm. times, mm -hmm. I will be certainly sitting down at 8 p.m. looking forward to the next episode of... Mm -hmm. Uh, I won't name the soaps, but of the kind that we watch on OTT. I am not, not watching OTT because it is convenient. I am watching OTT because of the content that comes on OTT. Hmm. And you cannot ignore a, a segment of 5 million on television. It's not small. Right. Some countries don't have that much population. Right. Okay, uh, Megha, give me a sense of how advertisers are seeing this because the, the push and the buzz around streaming services, while you do have advertising supported um, streaming services, that's really not what that game is about, isn't it? It is about subscription led revenues and subscriber choices. So how are advertisers seeing the growth in uh, streaming services and what are their fears and how can broadcasters like you LA those? So I think uh, the fact is that, you know, the, the, the core revenue from ad sales or is still coming from the linear business. And that is, in fact, funding a lot of those uh, OTT businesses of most of the broadcasters. The, uh, the OTT business is not at the moment a revenue making uh, proposition of, in terms of from a profitability point of view. Um, and there is a limited choice or limited opportunity in advertising uh, platforms you know from advertising on ott platforms um, there are a few of them which are which have a good story to talk about possibly but large part as we know the most 70 or 80 percent of the digital revenue is still being garnered between google and and facebook 
um and i think that is a big challenge so it is very uh, it, there is no um, sort of the black or white to this uh, on this it's an evolution it's evolving as we speak tele, the advertising revenue still continues to be a core source of revenue for uh, for television and uh, i i think that stands true to most of the broadcasters definitely for us and so for discovery plus also uh, it is the it's the sword proposition where you you know you're getting to pay for the content which is finally happening in our yes. industry something yes. we've been speaking about like we got to get customers to pay for content which is now a, a reality and i think that's where the where the growth is the biggest problem however i must add here in india is it's a very low arpu market in mm. comparison to rest part of the world so the challenge in this market is not only gr uh, to grow that revenue you have you need scale you need right. far many more subscribers at the rate we are getting paid for to really make it a business proposition worth its while sure puneet uh, you used to be on the other side of the table isn't it you were uh, you know you used to be an advertiser in your past uh, past life if i can call it that but tell me when you see what they need today from where you are what is what are their main concerns when they see the kind of push that the ott stroke streaming services are getting from legacy broadcasters and does is it bearing out in z as well what megha just said which is that linear tv is actually now subsidizing streaming services and yet streaming services the audiences seem to be getting the pick of the programming and content choices isn't it so uh, first talking from the advertisers point of view see they will chase where uh, the place where the audience and impressions are and that's really what they are paying for and if you look at how options have opened up for advertisers uh, and we shouldn't look at it as you know ott and subscription and so on they would be looking at saying there is a tv audience which is growing there is a digital audience which is there and growing there is a social platform audience which is there and growing so actually the marketer has a lot more options than actually reasons to worry if you ask me uh and then if you add to that the possibility of getting you know the the right medium for the tg that they want to target it's actually something which i would imagine if i think of my past life be a place where you are then looking at not the challenges but the opportunities of targeting of efficiencies of scale across different mediums okay the challenges okay. may actually be that it's the same consumer straddling all these right. so how do you make sure the wastages sure. are low sure. okay. and so on and so forth right uh, okay uh, i'm yeah. going to have to wind it up but harit very quickly i know that you spent a few uh, you know a couple of months on the road uh, visiting uh, customer houses and this was also in the hinterland you want to just quickly in 30 seconds give me your key insight about what you're seeing in the hinterland in the context of your industry i have never seen so many men in the villages uh, than i saw this time and uh, these are obviously people who were laid off or you know were not didn't have jobs so they came back home because right. food is available shelter is available so they were living there uh there was a tendency to downgrade downsize so for example if there are no kids at home you unsubscribe to kids right. if the sport no live sports bring uh, unsubscribe to sports or remove a language etc just to economize because if you were paying 300 you're trying to manage within 200 so right. making that easy for him to do add on and subtract uh, was the insight that we for got you. from there okay harit i'm going to have to leave this conversation here even though it's been so interesting uh, but i think you've circled back to the point puneet made and mega endorsed which is that the viewer has to be at the center of everything for this industry to survive and thrive thank you very much viewers for watching stay tuned to cnbc tv 18 and don't forget to look out for another conversation on the media dialogue